Welcome to Mini News Update, your weekly look back at the world of miniature and tabletop gaming. This is episode 5, and we'll be looking back at the week that ended October 10, 2009. The big news this week comes from Games Workshop. The Skaven Onslaught is almost upon us, and they provided lots of great preview images to whet our appetites for this impending doom. Skaven Clan Rats are finally getting their long-awaited facelift. The new box set will come with two sprues containing twin models that you can build as Clan Rats or Skaven Slaves. The Doom Wheel makes its return, as Warp Engineers have been toiling away to bring you this kit in its new plastic form. Speaking of old units in new plastic, we have Storm Vermin. This set will contain 20 models. There were also two leaked images of the Skaving Screaming Bell kit. This looks massive. We also saw some wonderful looking character models, such as Deathmaster Snitch, steel wielding his trademark tail blade, Packmaster Squeal Gnawtooth, is somewhat unimpressive, but he seems to be a hit with the little ones. And finally, Warlord Queek Headtaker looks ready to take on anyone. I just wonder if he's trying to compensate for anything with that mighty trophy rack. All in all, everything looks great, and I really look forward to seeing everything come out in the stores. Pulp Figures has some preview images this week. Captain Jim and Tugboat Annie. Crash McGurk. Bip, with his little monkey friend on his shoulder there. And Captain Tracy. And then there's Cashmere and the Countess. These are the ones that caught my eye the most. Love the look of them. I think they'd be a lot of fun to use, uh, paint up, and use in many different game systems. Vitrix have released a box set of 16 multi-pose British Napoleonic Peninsular Infantry in 54 millimeter scale. If anyone out there still plays Games Workshop's Inquisitor, this would be an easy way to bulk out your collection and provide conversion possibilities. Reaper has some new previews this week. The Bloodstone Gnome Faction and Warlord gets Pinners, Bodyguards, and a Hawk Sergeant. They also have a Zombie Werewolf just in time for Halloween. Darks and Designs have released a preview image of a Nikar from AE Bounty. They describe the Nikar as terrifying warriors and loyal followers. Dark Age Games released two new models this week, a new Soul Searcher and Death's Device. There are also three preview images, Manhunter, Hodge, and a Brute, all for the Outcast faction. Outcast Tabletop War Games is a new manufacturer that will focus on accessories for conversions. Their first release is this nice set of separate heads. Her starts have released a few new molds this week. Mold 276, the large catwalk mold. Mold 279, the large great accessory mold and Mold 325, the Industrial Edge Mold. These molds will be great additions for any Space Hulk player. They'd be able to cast up their own board and use regular sized bases for Games Workshop Terminators. Redbox Games have released two good looking preview images. The first is a female warrior of some kind. And the next is two dwarves. Cavalcade War Games has two new previews of Animal Greens. They'll be releasing an ox and a water buffalo at some point. No word on the actual release date. Hydra Miniatures has some new releases in stock. The Glack Tears add Dr. Zahn, a robot named Simon Six, and two Glack Tears with atomic bazookas. There's also a new alien for them to encounter, the massive Aquaclops. MicroArt Studios has previewed some new separate heads that they'll be releasing soon. And there's some new releases for hassle-free miniatures. In 40 millimeter scale, there's a cyber assassin named Susie. Not sure how stealthy giant knife boots are. Zombies better beware the dynamic ray figure. The Grim get a pilot and his little buddy, a male light infantry soldier who's going to make something explode, and a female light infantry leader. Finally, there's a panda who knows kung fu. Oh, also, there's a work in progress shot of a miniature named Ash. Seems to be missing an arm and wielding a boomstick. Hmm, interesting. Smartmax is a company I just became aware of this week. They have two lines they're currently developing. Smog 1888 is set in a Victorian fantasy and steampunk world. These models are amazing. They're also big. The line is being developed in 1 35th scale, so that's about the same size as many military tank kits to give you an idea of how much bigger than a typical 28mm figure they are. The second line they're working on is Mauser Earth, which is an alternative history and fantasy World War II setting. 
with these being in 135th scale, they'd fit right in with the aforementioned model kits. You can keep up with all their news on their blog at smartmaxblog.com. A new company named Unified Theory Games is looking for some playtesters. They're looking to release their skirmish rule set, Vortex, by Gen Con 2010 and want to get as much playtesting in before then as possible. You can find more details on their website, unifiedtheorygames.com. Fantasy Flight Games will be releasing pre-painted miniatures representing the investigators from their Arkham Horror board game. They'll be released in sets of two on a monthly basis starting in January. The first box set contains the tenacious professor Harvey Walters and the jet-setting Jenny Barnes. From Wells Expeditions, we finally have the release of Arcane Legions this week. There's been a lot of hype the last few months, so I'm looking forward to see if the game really catches on or not. This week I saw a new website called MiniatureReview.com. They're focusing on 15mm sci-fi miniatures, and it has a wealth of information out there from different manufacturers and different ideas for converting toys and other scale miniatures for use in 15mm sci-fi games. It's pretty cool and definitely worth a look. The D6 Generation released a new episode this week. This time they review AEG and Rackham's Russian Crush, as well as Rogue Trader from Fantasy Flight. There's also a great interview with Sally Karkula from Fantasy Flight Games in the When Wives Attack segment. This is one of the best gaming podcasts out there, so I highly recommend everyone checks it out. Our final bit of news this week is regarding the Mechanicon. This is a brand new three-day convention being held in Westchester, Pennsylvania on November 6th, 7th, and 8th. There will be a lot of events, but the two standouts are the five-game 1850-point Warhammer 40,000 Grand Tournament and the Chris Bledsoe Memorial Charity Auction. All proceeds will go to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society. Chris was very involved in the gaming industry, and some of his friends and coworkers have donated great items. Check out TheMechanicon.com for more details. Well, that wraps it up for this week. Thanks, as always, to Tabletop Gaming News and the Miniatures page for being such great resources for miniatures-related news. We'll see you again in one week.